Listen, I've been on the search for the perfect mobile gaming controller for years at this point, looking for the perfect one for me that would check off all the boxes, and I've yet to find such a controller. And that's why when EZSMX reached out to me and said, do you want to review the brand new M05 mobile gaming controller? I said, absolutely I do. So let's get into it. Now the format of this video is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to go over the things that I really like about this controller, and then I'm going to go over at least three things that I don't like about this controller, all in an effort to help you decide if this is the right controller for you. And just to keep things above board, I do want you to know that even though Easy SMX did send me this controller in exchange for my honest review, they are not seeing this video before it's published. All of my thoughts are my own and no money exchanged hands. Now the M05 is sort of the successor to this this guy. This is the Easy SMX M10. Now I say sort of the successor because the M05 did not replace the M10. The number goes down instead of up and the features aren't necessarily improved upon. They're just different. And I may do a comparison video between these two sometime in the future. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that content. But for today, I'm going to focus really on the M05. And we'll just start with the box here. Mine did come a little bit dented. And I know I said this is brand new. It came out in May of 2024. Um, I've had it for a little over a month at this point. And so you may be looking at this box and thinking, why in the world is Google Stadia on here? Because <laughs> Google Stadia no longer exists. Um, and I don't know the answer to that question. That's the first thing that stuck out to me. I saw that on the website and I thought, that has to be a mistake. Surely that's not really on the box. But it is, uh, so I don't know if they had a bunch of these boxes made up already that just didn't have the controller on it and this was on there. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why that's on there. But everything else that's on here, as far as I'm aware, uh, does work. I haven't tried GeForce Now because I don't have GeForce Now and I haven't tried Luna. But this does work with Steam Link. It does work with Game Pass. It works with Remote Play on both Xbox and PlayStation and works with both of those really well with one glaring oversight that I will get into in just a few minutes. But there's not a whole lot to this box. We see, um, you know, a diagram here on the back. This does have precise 3D joysticks. These are not Hall sticks, but they are good joysticks. It does have Hall linear triggers, however. It also has back paddle buttons, programmable buttons. It does support fast charging through a USB-C port on the bottom left here. And and plugs into basically any phone that works with USB-C, including the iPhone 15 series and Android. Other than the controller itself, the only other thing that comes in the box is a user manual, and it's one of these like fold out, you know, roadmap style things that gets really confusing when you try to fold it back up. But <laughs> other than that, it is a really nice user manual. There's plenty of good information in here. But enough about the box. Let's get to the controller. This controller here is completely covered in a rubber pad. It is extendable for devices up to 173 millimeters. It has a very strong spring in here to make sure that your phone stays in here nice and tight. And my iPhone 15 Pro Max fits in here um, with plenty of room to spare uh, about this much room here I want to show you this um, right here you can pull this back and you see that there are different modes we have an HID mode for Android an Xbox mode for Android a virtual touch mode for Android and a PlayStation mode for iOS and to switch between those modes you just hold down these two bottom buttons your function and your turbo button together for about two seconds and you can switch between those modes and the light right here will change to yellow, white, blue, or green to tell you which mode you are in. And I think that that's incredibly useful, especially to have that there just kind of on the device wherever you go. You know, they didn't bury it in the user manual over here that you're gonna lose in a couple of weeks. It's right here on a sticker on the device. Also on the back, there's another sticker. It tells you, you know, on the company website and the make and model of this, but then it has a QR code right here. And this QR code does take you to your app store where you can download the app for this device, which gives you some customization options. Now I mentioned that these sticks are not Hall sticks, but I do want to show you the size of them compared to the PlayStation 5 remote controller. The stick itself is not quite as wide in diameter, but it is designed very similarly. It's indented in the center and has this nice texture on the outside to keep you from slipping. And the length of it, again, 
maybe not full size, but the length of it is pretty close. And I think you can see that there. So these are pretty decent sticks in terms of their size. Definitely larger than Joy-Con style sticks. And I absolutely love that. And one other thing is that this USB-C port does bend. It's like on a spring or something so that you can actually connect your phone at an angle and not worry about damaging your port. And then voila, there's your phone. Now, I don't have an Android device to test this on, but I am going to show you the app on iOS. My understanding is that they are pretty different, that the Android app has a lot more customization options to it than the iPhone app does. But this is what I had to work with, and I'm okay with that. There's really not much here. I can go to mode, and I can select Xbox mode or PlayStation mode, but I found that Xbox mode doesn't seem to work quite right with iOS. So I've just been using PlayStation mode. And then the only other thing you can really do, I hit add game, it says current mode does not support that. So, but you can hit game station, go to, and it will take you to this screen where you can see basically your buttons working. But in here you can set some things like your rumble. Oh, this has rumble. <laughs> you don't always see that in mobile gaming controllers, but this does have rumble. It goes from one to five, no, one to six, um, or zero to six actually. You can turn it off and then you can do a vibration test. I've just left it in the middle on three. You can also test your analog triggers. Yes, these are analog triggers and they do feel really nice. I actually really like the triggers on this device. You can also set these to be quick triggers, um, basically digital triggers. So they will just go from zero to 100, uh, even if you just press them a little bit. And you can even adjust those individually between your right and your left. I'm not sure why you would ever need to do that, but if the occasion arises, you have that option. You can also see how your joysticks work on here. You can adjust the dead zone on both the left and right joysticks. And you can see that they don't snap to cardinal directions, but they really go exactly where you want them to go. These are good sticks. It's a little unfortunate that they're not Hall Effect sticks, but they are nice sticks. And keep in mind that this controller retails for $44.99. So there are some things that would need to be sacrificed at that price point. And I guess they decided that Hall Effect sticks were one of those things. You can also see that the back paddle buttons M1 and M2 work. And I haven't really talked about the face buttons yet, but they're nice. They're big, they are distinct, they have a nice press to them. They're glossy, but not too glossy. You can really travel around here very well. I found diagonals on this D-pad. I don't know if you can see it there, but I found them to be very easy to hit and very precise as well. In fact, they may be even a little bit too easy to hit for some people. Depends on what kind of game you're playing, but you can definitely see it rolling back and forth there as I roll my thumb across the bottom of the D-pad. And while we're talking about that, why don't we just play a little bit of a platformer. Let's play some Shovel Knight Dig on Apple Arcade. As you can see, both the D-pad and the action button are very responsive, which of course is exactly what you need in a game like this. Yes. Oh yeah, give me that jewels. Here we go. And you know, this is a game that was designed really to be played with touch controls in a lot of ways, but uh, even games that are designed to be played like that, I mean, they're so much more enjoyable most of the time with a controller. And this is an, a great example of that because you could play this, sure, with touch controls, but I'm definitely going to get a lot further <laughs> in this level with, I say that as I die, I'm definitely going to get a lot further in this level with physical controls than I am with touch controls. Well, let's try something else. Try some remote play on Xbox. Now this is not Game Pass over the cloud. This is me streaming from my Xbox console to my phone using this controller to control my little crab here and another crab's treasure, which I think has some weird controls. Boom, get out of here. Took them down, easy enough. You may hear the bumpers right now. All the controls are very quiet, except for the bumpers. Just want to point that out real quick, if that's a big deal to you. Also try some PlayStation 5 remote play. And I try these out because these are the questions I always get in the comments section is, does it work with PlayStation remote play? Does it work with Xbox remote play? Does it work with Steam Link? Yeah, it works with all those. It works really great. And here we are on PlayStation. Just resume the LEGO 2K game I had going. Whoa! I think you can see just how good looking it is, even streamed over my home network, and just how fast and fluid everything is. And so we may be at this point in the review and you may be thinking, Bo, what could you possibly say that's wrong with this device? Well, this is where I want to get into the very first thing, and probably the thing that annoys me the most, and that's that I cannot figure out a way to pull up the PlayStation or Xbox menu 
without using the touch screen. There doesn't seem, I've got four buttons here, function, turbo, plus and minus, or start and select, whatever, and none of them, whether I hold them down or push them quickly or whatever, pull up the PlayStation menu or the Xbox menu. I've read through the user manual. I've tried to look online to see if anybody had figured it out. I didn't find an answer. And so if you know the answer, I would love to hear it because <laughs> I like this controller for the most part, and I would love to be able to use that, that function. But this just goes to the menu function goes to the map in this game i think maybe that's like the touchpad on the on the controller i'm not sure this one's your picture button up here for playstation games and then your turbo button is for the controller specifically so you can map something to go turbo so none of those help me so i have to touch the screen i have to touch the three dots and then i have to go and hold the playstation button to go to the home page and it just is really I don't it shouldn't be that big a deal but it really takes me out of the whole using a controller experience when I have to go back and use the touch screen and it's the same way when I remote play my Xbox and I feel like that's a fair constructive criticism to easy SMX to say hey next time you release one of these give us a way to access those features to access our our home menu on Xbox and PlayStation because that's something that the first party controllers have and that we're all used to using not only can you use this with PlayStation and Xbox and Steam Link and things like that Apple Arcade any game that supports controllers that's installed natively on your phone you can also play emulated games like stuff that you might play in RetroArch or Delta on iPhone. And this controller is completely compatible with those things as well. The second thing that I don't really care for is actually the D-pad. The D-pad itself, as far as D-pads go, isn't terrible. It really has more to do about its placement for me. And while I know it doesn't look like it's in a terrible spot, there's something about the way that I have to, look how my hand is right now, going to the left. <laughs> I have to pull my thumb back so far to use the left button and and even the down button and it just starts to hurt my thumb and my hand. I mean when you switch down to the d-pad your whole hand has to adjust on this controller and just for comparison's sake I want to show you their previous mobile gaming entry and how that looks. See how these are a little bit offset from the joystick? When I move my finger down it's just there but because these are right on top of each other when I move my hand down to this one it makes my whole hand have to pull back away from the controller and it just becomes uncomfortable and it doesn't take it long before my thumb starts to hurt and I'm like okay I'm kind of done playing this game now because <laughs> uh, I don't really want to use the d-pad another thing I really like about this controller is that even though it does use your phone battery to power the controller I've been playing this for about 45 minutes at this point and it's barely drained any of my battery. I think I've lost about, I'll have to go back and see if I can see how much it was at and when I started in the video. I want to say I've only lost about 6% of my battery this whole time playing and powering the controller with the phone battery. So it has very little power draw and if you do need to charge, you can charge right through this port. And before I forget, while I'm talking about ports, there is no headphone jack on this device. And so if you were hoping to use your three and a half millimeter headphones, there's nowhere to plug those in on this controller. Another question I always get asked in these mobile controller reviews is, does it work with Call of Duty Mobile? And good news, yes, it does. As long as the version available for your phone supports controllers. In fact, even though I'm not a big Call of Duty fan, I did play a match just for you guys and I won. You do, however, have to first go into the settings using the touchscreen and enable controllers. Once you've done that, you have to use the touchscreen again to back out of the menu, start a match. But once you start a match, the controller will work. And I had no issues controlling my character, aiming, aiming down sights, or driving vehicles. The final thing that I don't care for about this controller, and it's a total nitpick, not that big of a deal, but it's the fact that my case, which honestly, isn't that thick doesn't fit in this controller and it's not even that the case doesn't fit in the controller it's that the USB-C port doesn't extend far enough to actually connect into my phone and as you can see my case is not that thick I wouldn't say it's an ultra slim case by any means but it's definitely on the slim side of a medium sized case and even with that I still can't get this to connect with the case still on. And so I hesitate to even call that a design flaw. It's more of a 
personal nitpick, if if anything. And from an engineering perspective, I don't really know how you would fix that or find a solution to that. Because you don't want this USB-C plug to extend too far because then you'd be putting all the pressure on your port on this side of your phone and on this side of the controller from that spring. And I guess that's where maybe the addition of an adapter would come in handy with this particular device. So I recognize the challenge of making that work, but I know that this is a common question that a lot of people have, so I felt like I needed to point it out. And that's the Easy SMX M05. I think overall it's a very nice controller. There's just a few little things that I think could have been improved. It's very comfortable in the hand with its little bump outs here in the back. There's plenty of room to, for it to sit in your palms. The joysticks being on the larger side are super nice. I love the analog triggers and the feel that they have. The face buttons feel full size and I never feel like with all this rubber padding here that my phone's going to get scuffed up when I'm putting it in this thing. But I wish that this D-pad was offset just a little bit and that there was at least one more more extra button on here to use as that PlayStation and Xbox home menu button. But that about wraps it up for this review. If you're interested in the M05, I do have affiliate links in the description and the pinned comment below. It really helps support the channel at no added cost to you when you use those, and I really appreciate it. Thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing this video with a friend, and hey, stay kind and encouraging out there. I'll catch you on the flippity flip.